Okay, so I'm going to go over um, how to find the future value of a lump sum using different compounding periods. Okay, um, so we're going to we're going to do problem four dash three, and and let's read the problem. It says Fiona plans to invest five hundred dollars later today. She wants to know what amount her investment will grow in twenty years if she earns twelve percent interest compounded. A annually, B quarterly, and C monthly. Okay, so we'll go ahead and type in here what we're given. We're given the present value is equal to a negative dollar sign 500. Okay, and she's investing it, right? So it's out of her pocket, so we'll put that negative. And in is 20 years and we'll say that R is 12 percent again don't forget the percent sign um, and then we'll say this is a comp, uh, annual let's say APR annual percentage okay and we want to find A what the future value is if A is compounded annually, so we'll say one compounding period per year. Okay. And then for B, I don't know what the future value, what it is. And quarterly, how many times is that per year? It would be four, right? And then C, and the future value, if we have monthly, monthly would be 12 compounding periods per year. Okay, so for a solution, um, I'm going to copy this down here. Let's copy all three of them down, that'd be easier. I'm going to highlight them all. I'm going to right click and go copy. Move it in here, right click, go paste. Okay, so I'm just going to use the Excel formula to start with. So I'm going to go equal the future, oops, equals the future value. Now there's, I could click on this and it, gives, and it tells me like a shortcut formula. It tells me the first thing it wants to rate. You could also, once you get to this point, you could also click up here and it'll give you the function argument box if you want to do it that way. Yeah. And it tells you, explains what the rate is. The rate is the interest period rate per period. For example, you have 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments. Okay. And this is this is 1, so it's actually just going to be 12%, right? And the number of periods is the total number of payment periods in the investment. And um, I'm going to go ahead and click up here. I made a mistake here, right? I'm going to have to take this years and put it over here. Excel is not going to like this. But we'll go ahead and finish it, and then we'll fix it when we're done. And the payment, there's no payments here, right? You just invest $500, and you leave it there for 20 years. So the payment will put zero. And the present value is this $500, okay? And don't worry about the type right now, because and then we'll just go OK. Now, I didn't like it because I got a success. I'm going to get rid of this 20 here and this years here. You know, I'll put the years here. Okay. And let's see if it gives us an answer. So that's our answer. Okay. And for B, it's going to be equal to future value. Again, we'll just click this so we do it the same way. The rate here is the interest rate per period. So it's going to be this divided by the compounding periods per year, right? The interest rate per period. And the number of periods is going to be this times the number of compounding periods per year. So instead of being 12% is 0.03, which is 3%, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Instead of being 20 years, it's 20, 20 periods. There's four compounding periods, so 20 times 4 is 80. Okay. 
payment again is zero. And the present value again will click here. And we hit OK. And that's the answer for that one. Now you can see since we had more compounding periods, the balance is a little bit higher. Okay, we made more money. All right. And now let's go ahead and do the next one. Let's do 12 equals future value. This one, the rate is still 12%. We know you have to divide it 12 times, right? Because it's 12 compound periods. The number of periods is still 20 years times 12 times per year. So it's 240 compound periods. <clears throat> the payment is zero. Again, the present value is a 500. And we go OK again. And you have a little bit more at the end. So, so as you can see, the number of compounding periods gets higher and higher. All right. So um, what we could do is like, well, well, what if we keep going? Let's see if we keep going. So we could say uh, we have yearly, semi, annually, quarterly, monthly. And then we have what's next? Weekly. We could go daily compounding, hourly, minutely, secondly. What if we compound every second? Or do we just go continuously? Okay, so we could calculate the compounding periods. So yearly, yearly is one compounding period per year. Semi is two, quarterly is four, monthly is 12, weekly is 52, daily is 365. Hourly would be equal to 365 times 24, right? Minutely would be equal to this times 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And secondly, it would be equal to this times 60, because there's 60 seconds in a minute. And continually, it would be infinite. Okay. Then I go ahead and put that right. Just to okay, so let's go ahead and calculate this. It's going to be equal to a future value. And let's go ahead and do it this way again. The rate, the rate is going to be right here, all right? Now, I'm going to copy this formula down so I don't have to do it a bunch of times. So I want it to always stick there, so I'm going to hit F4. And then we're going to divide it by the number of compound periods per year. Okay, so this is divided by 1, so it's still 12%. Now, I'm not going to hit F4 because I want this to be relative and I want it to move down. Here I want it to stick, so I hit F4. Here I want it to move down with my formula and I copy it. So I'm not going to hit F4. Okay. Number of periods. Well, the number of periods is 20 years. Again, I'm going to hit F4 and put dollar signs in front. I'm going to take it times the number of compounds per year, and I'm not going to hit F4 there. The payment is zero. The present value is here. Again, I want to hit F4 because I don't want to move down. I'll hit a formula, and then we'll go OK. Now, if I drag this formula down, it will give me the different amounts. Okay. And the, this one should be the same as that, right? This is the same answer. And then four times a year would be the second answer. And then monthly would be the third answer. So it looks like we did it correctly. So you can see that as we go up and up and up, and the number of compounding periods, you get diminishing returns, right? In fact, when you round it, when you round it to cents, these two are the same. Now if we take it out a few places, if we take all these out a few places, we could go like this. You can see that this one is a little bit bigger. When we go from minutely to second, it's a little bit bigger. Infinitely is a different formula. It would be equal to um, now this is a algebraic formula, so I'm going to make this negative or positive by putting a negative in front. It would be your present value times the exponent uh, the number of years times your interest rate. Okay. 
it's not infinite or you can't calculate it the same way. You could put a really big number in and get real close, but we can get exactly using this formula. And infinite, even then, is just a little bit bigger when you go from second to, to, to continuous. Okay. So, so the compounding periods and more compounding periods for your, you do get a little bit of money, but when you go and get up here into hourly, minutely, secondly, you know, it starts not making it. Now, it's a huge jump from yearly to semi annually to quarterly. But then it starts going down and down. You have diminishing returns as you increase the number of compounding periods per year. Now, you can also do this on the HP uh, 41C. Oh, by the way, there's a couple formulas in there. You could do it by hand. And these two formulas here are basically what I showed you. Not do it by hand, but I have the, the two formulas, 410 and 411. Show you what we did here where we took we took this and divided it by, by we took n and took it times the number of years. That's what you do right here. And here you take r and divide it by the number of payments per year. Okay. You, like right here and now. Right here we divide it for the rate. You divide and then for the number of periods you multiply. So those are the formulas in your book that show that. Okay, so that's it for that. I would show you on the calculator. Um, I suggest you try to do it on the calculator, but uh, I'm not going to show you in this class, this on this video. All right, thank you. Hope that helped.